Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Grand Theft Auto. If you enjoy this video, please become a bus driver and then when you have a full load of passengers, drive really fast and dangerously and then announce that you will only stop if all passengers subscribe to Modest Pelican, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealtho Mato and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared bikey gang known as the Sons of Virgins, and these are their stories. So I log in, and a message pops up saying congratulations, here's your login gift of $250,000. What makes this gift even sweeter is that Stealtho Mato tells me he did not receive the same gift. As you can imagine, I find this highly amusing. After smashing a hearty breakfast, I go and pick up Mato as we are currently working our way through some huge bank robbery heist or some shit. Honestly, Crosby is the brains of the operation, Marto and I mostly just look pretty and murder hookers. On our way to meet Crosby, we find something peculiar, a wild noob frolicking in Vinewood Hills. Seeing a noob outside of Call of Duty captivity is actually quite rare, so naturally we watch and learn as the little fella tries to climb on top of this house. I don't know why he wants to get up there, but that's the beauty of noobs, they are such fascinating and curious creatures. They scare easily though, and he becomes spooked and makes a run for it. Stealtho Mato then proceeds to gun him down. Enough goofing around though, we need to meet Crosby as we have business to attend to. Now I don't know how you guys drive around in Grand Theft Auto, but sometimes I like to prove how big my penis is by going off road and sending it at every opportunity. Just my luck though, as I get a little bit too egotistical about my driving skills and accidentally sink the car in a river, which is the worst kind of moist. Not to worry though, we'll just jack a civilian's car, or dare I say, commit Grand Theft Auto. Yikes. Anyway, a nice looking sports car heads towards us, which will do just fine. I whip out my trusty assault rifle and kill the driver, and it turns out the driver is no joke Crosby. He does this thing where he pays money to hide his player icon and gamer tag, and then drives all normal so he looks like an NPC civilian, and he was trying to sneak up and kill us both. Little did he know, I am a terrible driver and would need to swap cars mid-trip. I subconsciously outsmarted him. I I wish I could tell you legends that we got our act together and calmly drove to my clubhouse, but we barely made it 500 meters before we had a four star wanted rating and were fighting the entire LSPD. But eventually we made it, and upon arrival, I mounted Crosby's vehicle in my BBC, aka my big black car, as a sign of dominance. There was no real reason to stop here, it's just that I had recently purchased the clubhouse and wanted to see how it was going. But even with the random 250,000 Rockstar gave me, I still need quite a bit more cash before I can buy businesses that will actually start making me passive income. But we are about to earn some serious cash. So on with the bank heist. Crosby tells Marto and I to buy some better guns as the missions will apparently be getting tougher. He suggests getting body armor or maybe an extended magazine or even a suppressor. But I decide that fashion comes before function and choose a fresh gold camo. I try to show Marto my new gun, but he refuses to look at it and then puts a gun to his head and pulls the trigger. You know how TV characters have quirky little catchphrases? Well, it feels like Marto committing suicide is like his catchphrase now, but just way darker. Finally, we get to Crosby's facility and actually start the damn mission. So in this episode, we are determined to finish act one of this ridiculously long bank heist. Remember those DeLoreans, AKA the back to the future cars we stole last time? Well, we need to drive to them and what better vehicle than a truck with a mounted machine gun on the roof? Here's a life hack for you. Traffic really isn't such an issue when you're unleashing 3,200 rounds per minute into fellow commuting vehicles. We arrive at the DeLoreans. I just thought they looked like the Back to the Future cars, but didn't have any modifications. Well, yeah, it turns out they can fly and have mounted machine guns and even heat-seeking missiles. So this mission went from making out in a movie theater to whips and ball gags pretty damn fast. So here we are, chasing down a big ass plane and shooting attack helicopters out of the sky. I genuinely love how Grand Theft Auto V really makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. 
Canyon. After a while, we even get to shoot the airliner out of the sky, and even though this is truly a ridiculous mission, it's easily the best I've played in GTA Online so far. On the way back to the base, I even swing by the Santa Monica Pier and mow down some pedestrians enjoying the sunshine, because it's important to enjoy the little things in life every now and again. We finish the mission and each pocket a cool 26,000, which honestly seems kind of like chump change after the free 250,000 I was given, but once we finish this act it should rain paper. The next part of the plan involves sneaking into a US military base and downloading some top secret file. But first I had to annoy Marto a little bit with my new novelty horn. It cost me like 30k so I need to ensure I get my money's worth. <laughs> I play the horn like one or 20 more times and then Crosby shoots me in the head, which I think we can all agree was a justifiable decision. Anyway, sneaking into a US military base. This is vintage Agent 47 as going undercover is his bread and butter. We stroll past the guards in our flawless disguises of khaki sweaters that could have been purchased literally anywhere. Our objective is simple, get to the top floor. Now I'm no mission designer, right? But we have to now walk up like 50 floors flights of stairs. One moment we are shooting aircraft out of the sky in flying cars and now we are forced to play Stair Simulator 2019. Not sure how this one slipped through the cracks at Rockstar Studios, but Agent 47 is going to have a thicker booty than my thumbnails after all these godforsaken steps. After a million hours we get to the control room and download the file, and then guess what? Back down all the stairs. What the actual f well, whatever, at least it's over now. We just need to steal a stealth chopper and get the hell out of here. There's a lot of soldiers waiting for us and we begin to take some serious fire, but we should be okay. And then Crosby 7885 disconnects. You know I'm mad because I said his full name. Now I'm not exactly sure who would be at the top of a list of the organizations you don't want to piss off, but I'm going to take an educated guess and say that the US military is right up there and we don't have Crosby with us anymore. Anymore. But potentially worse than both of these things is that we are going to have to redo the entire mission and therefore walk up and down every single one of those stairs again. Literally kill me now. So Crosby loads back in and we drive back to the military base. We walk past all of the guards. We walk up all of the stairs again, which is strangely much more enjoyable the second time around. Obviously I'm joking, it sucked balls. We get to the control room again and this time there is a guy standing here. I guess bird watching, I decide not to take any chances and take him down with some well-placed shots. Well, several well-placed shots, but better to be safe than sorry. We download the file and then Marto says there is an elevator. A damn elevator that can instantly take you up or down the building. If you are drinking a beverage right now, I ask that you please pour some out for our brains because we are literally brain dead. This part of the mission was meant to take like two minutes and the actual hard part is coming up. So yeah, please comment F below to pay respects for the tragic death of our common sense. We steal the stealth chopper and fly to another military base to steal some files. This next part of the mission was badass. We stealthily maneuvered our way around, taking down targets in synchronized fashion. Eventually we find an elevator and take it down to a massive server farm so that we can hack something that I am sure relates to the overarching plot of this mission, but I usually take a leak during the cutscene so I have frankly no idea what is going on. Despite all of this, it still somehow a more satisfying storyline than Game of Thrones Season 8. Anyway, it's time for the final mission of Act 1. Marto goes AFK for a moment before we begin, and Crosby and I know exactly what we have to do. I find this weird car with an anime girl on it, and so I position it right in front of Marto so it is the first thing he sees when he comes back to his controller. While I am doing this, Crosby places several sticky bombs on Marto's back. We then patiently wait for him to come back to his controller, and then the second we hear him laugh at the pink anime car, Crosby detonates the bombs for the easy kill. A young 
Anger Agent 47 would be proud of that calculated assassination. The real mission is that we have to raid a government facility which is currently being raided by some terrorists. So plot twist, we did at one stage take on the US military but we were actually helping them the entire time and are now currently saving this base from being hacked. So we are now the good guys again. Well I mean my mind is now flashing back to when I road killed a bunch of civilians on Santa Monica Pier and plus the dozens of guards we have killed. So calling ourselves good guys might be a little bit of a stretch but like we aren't as bad as before. So we save the base and then Oprah walks in and is like well done gentlemen we will now pay you a lot of money for your work. She tells us to look under our seats and so I look under my seat and pocket a cool $293,000 which means we can now buy ourselves a business. I make my way back to the clubhouse and log onto the laptop and there she is. Our first ever cocaine lockup. I hit purchase and drop a cool half mil in the process. I'm pretty excited to check this place out. I mean I've always wanted to own a business, I just thought it would maybe be like a small cafe or a bar or something but hey cocaine lockup. I head inside and I know I'm no drug lord but this looks less like a cocaine lockup and more like an empty warehouse with some tables. So it turns out I have to wait a moment for my staff to show up so yay realism. I mean flying cars is fine but having staff instantly appear is just too unrealistic I guess. What better way to pass the time than harassing some locals. I also had to fetch some car that I won't bother showing as it was literally just me driving to the city getting a car and then driving it back. But when I walk back into the lockup, business is now booming. Everyone is in their underwear too, which means you know things are going well, I guess. I actually looked up why they always work in their underwear in movies and games and apparently it's so they don't steal the product. It's also hot in the factories and traces might get into their clothing and therefore they could be picked up by police dogs. So there you go. I think every business of any kind should make their employees work in their underwear, but what do I know? I'm just a guy who owns a $500,000 coke lockup. Yeah, you damn right, boys. We are one step closer to world domination. Well, Los Santos domination. Anyway, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thank you to my patrons for making this channel possible. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.